in this video we are going to see about the sequential logic circuits in the previous video we have seen the combinational logic circuit where we have seen uh, encoders decoders and then multiplexers demultiplexers and adder circuits half adder full adder and half subtractor and full subtractor all these things we have seen in the previous videos which comes under the combinational logical circuits now we are going to see sequential logic circuits so what is the what is meant by sequential logic circuit here the output is dependent on both the combination of present inputs and previous outputs whereas in the combinational logical circuit the output is dependent only on the present input state not on the previous state it will not take account what is the previous state of the input here it will take the previous output and uh, that is a, uh, whatever is coming out of the previous output that also can be fed as an input and that will be considered so the previous output is treated as a treated as a present state so this is the main difference between the combinational circuit and sequential logical circuit so the sequential logical circuit it contains the combinational circuit it involves a combinational circuit also and it consists of plus additionally memory storage whereas in combinational there is no memory storage here since it is considering it is taking the previous output also so memory is a must in order to remember that so this has the memory storage unit also even it can, can contain only memory element also so here types of sequential circuit in this also there are two types one is asynchronous sequential circuit and another one is synchronous sequential circuit so what is asynchronous sequential circuit it has no clock pulse right whereas synchronous consists of clock pulse so why we need a clock pulse for example uh, in order for all the circuits to work in a synchronous mode so, so for example the output of one unit will be given as an input for the other unit and so on right so in this case if the output comes only the next will work so in the and not only that they have to work in a coordination in the case of uh, in that case we go for clock pulses so let me explain it later first we will see uh the picture of the sequential circuit so it is a combination of combinational logic circuit and it consists of memory so here we have if you see this combinational circuit will consist of only input and output and it will consider only the present state of the input whereas if you see here this output is fed back okay it is fed back to the memory and then from this memory whatever is out, uh, output that will be given again as an input for this combination this circuit so that is why this is called sequential circuit so the output and not only that along with the clock signal right the clock signal is also there in order for so on applying of the clock signal only the uh, output from the uh, this logic circuit will be fed to the memory okay and from memory it goes to the again as an input can be given as an input so all these things can be done only with the after the clock signal till this it will be like a combinational logic circuit but when it comes here the input goes as it will be stored in memory so all these things will be done with the help of the uh, once uh, clock signals uh, is coming then only it will do the operation so as we have seen there are two types of sequential circuits synchronous and asynchronous asynchronous sequential circuit straight transition occur independently of any clock it does not consider about the clock pulse whatever it is whenever there is an input available it will be transferred to the output which in turn will be transferred to the next circuit and without any much of the involvement of the any clock pulse and normally depend on the timing of transition so it depends upon the timing of the transition in the input variables so whenever an input comes there will be an output so changes in more than one output do not necessarily occur simultaneously so uh, here this is a different this is the this is in an asynchronous sequential circuit whereas in a synchronous sequential circuit the timing of all state transitions is controlled by a common clock okay whenever there is a clock signal is applied then only there will be changes in the input and output whereas here it is not like that so changes in all variable they occur simultaneously once the clock signal is okay uh, say for example some four circuits are connected with each other the first circuit is giving output to second circuit 
as an input and the second circuit output is given as an input for the third circuit and so on. So whenever there is a clock pulse, at a time, the input, when the first input gets an input, the output of the first circuit will go as an input for the second circuit and so on on a single clock pulse. That is simultaneously the inputs are given for the uh, next next circuit. So that is where the clock signal plays an important role. Now we'll see what is a clock signal. It is a timing signal. Okay, it is mainly used for maintaining the timing so that uh, at this time this has to work. Then in at the next time these circuits has to work. We have the circuits are formed in such a way that say for example if you have A plus B addition, then uh, let me see here. If you have say C equal to A plus B, then D equal to C. Let us say these are all the next next information instructions. Now, A after the value of A and B is added only, you will have values in C. So after this only, this C has this has to be executed. The C value will be stored in D. So after this step only, this step has to be executed. Then only this has some valid value. So that is what sequential execution. Okay. So next next, if this is executing parallelly and this is executing parallelly each one will have different value where whereas we expect what is that the value of a and b is the added value latest value is added to the c and that value has to be stored in b so if, if our expectation is this but if it is done uh, uh, without any order uh, think what will happen you will have uh, different answers or the one uh, what is not expected that will take place so here, uh, it is used for maintaining the timing. Okay, a clock signal, and it can be represented as a square wave like this. This we call it as a square wave. Whereas this we call it as a sine wave. I hope you understand. This is a sine wave. Whereas here, when you represent like this, this is a. Uh, square wave as well as we call it as a discrete and digital signal like that we will say and it is used to coordinate actions of two or more circuits. as i said suppose the uh, there is an input of this circuit let us consider this is a circuit i'm representing it as a block diagram now so here uh, we have an input and we have a clock signal okay so on giving of the clock signal, at a time, the information from input is transferred and whatever is output, the previous output may be, that's what we have seen in sequential circuit. The previous, when it is going as an in, inside as an input, the previous output is transferred to this circuit, same way as an input, and this previous output is transferred to this circuit uh, at the one clock signal. So that is what at a time they will be transferred. So that is what we say by simultaneous. Okay. And it is used to coordinate the actions of two more, two or more circuits. That's what we have seen now. Often transitions will occur on one of the edges of the clock pulse. A, a transition takes place uh, at one, uh, one of the edges of the clock pulse means it's called edge triggering. Now we'll see what is two types of uh, triggering of class, clock pulses. Now, yes, uh, when we are before going uh, deep into the sequential circuit, first we will discuss about the clock signal uh, characteristics. So clock signal and triggering. A clock is a periodic signal. Periodic name itself says it's a timing signal, okay? Uh, at a particular time only the rising and the lowering of edge takes place. So this we call it as lowering and this we call it as rising edge. And then again here it starts lowering and then here it stops rising. So that we call it as a rising and lowering. And we call this as a trick. Uh, when at that point, when any action takes place, we call it as a triggering. Now we will see what is types of, there are two types of triggering. One is level triggering and another one is edge triggering. Now see here, this is the input we are giving, right? Low, high, low has given, here there is a high and here low we have given and high like this okay this is a flip-flop 
now this is the input uh, which is given and clock signal so depending upon the clock signal only they will change i'll come and explain this again later now we'll see this uh, uh, different types of level uh, level triggering in level triggering there are two types positive level and negative level triggering and edge triggering it has again it has two triggering one is positive edge triggering and negative edge triggering so what is uh, level triggering a level triggering uh, here we have uh, let us consider the square wave is like this this is called level positive level and this is called negative level see here so there is a change of state of the input you give some input and that input will be entered into the Uh, circuit and there will be change in the output during this level positive level and sometimes it may take place at the negative level so that we call it as positive level triggering and negative level triggering now the next one is positive edge triggering and negative edge triggering so what is edge triggering so here here itself it started rising that is the rising is called positive and here it start lowering okay this is called trailing edge or negative edge triggering so during this time when there is a transition of the input to output that is transition of information and the data is transferred into the circuit then we call it as when it is when it then the data is transferred during this time rising edge or positive edge triggering then we call it as a positive edge triggering clock where when the data is transferred during the trailing edge or the negative edge then we call it as a negative edge triggering okay so when the input of flip flop is connected to clock pulse and when the state of the flip flop is switched to other state what is the state of the flip flop is changed to other state uh, when it is zero it may change to one but that will depend only on the input if the input is low itself if it keeps on giving a zero then the output also will be zero but when the input is zero at the first time and when the output is uh, uh, the output is also zero then when the clock signal goes and when the input is given one then at that time the output may change okay depending upon the input so it is done by triggering during the rising or lowering of clock pulse we call it as edge triggering flip flop and here we call it as a uh, positive pulse as we have seen in the previous picture this is zero level and this is one level when the transition takes place data transfer takes place during this level we call it as positive when it takes place during this we call it as negative whereas rising itself it takes place it is called positive edge triggering here it is called negative edge triggering and the block diagram which you can represent for a clock pulse when it is positive is like this a line and a uh, triangle like this triangle shape and here if for negative edge triggering you put a bubble this shows that this is a negative edge triggering now we are going to see flip flops the uh, sequential circuit uh, flip flop comes under the sequential circuit where it is storing a value so it is a memory unit and then it takes the previous input and based on the clock pulse the data changes okay so there are these are the data storage unit one flip flop can store one bit of information it is a memory unit so for example if you want to store four bit of information then you have to go for four flip flops okay so it is a memory unit so here in this data storage unit it has two states where it can store either a one or a zero so a flip flop can store one bit of information which may be a zero or one some of the basic flip flop which we are going to see in this uh, coming classes are d flip flop or s flip flop jk flip flop and t flip flop now we'll see one by one first we'll see the or is flip flop this is the most common flip flop used right so as i said flip flop is a memory unit it can store one bit of information so it has two inputs see here it has two inputs uh, the pictures the block diagram is like this uh, actually block diagram is block diagram will be like this or and here yes and you can have a positive edge triggering 
and you have q and q bar q q bar this is the block diagram the circuit diagram is given here here uh, we have the nor gate okay using nor gate we are building this so r and s so what is r r is for reset okay and s is for set so what is reset and what is set uh, reset the name itself uh, when this uh, when data is given as one for this you will have q as zero when set when the data bit, uh, when, when the input for s is given as one you will have q as one so uh these are all the this is the truth table given s and r and the output there are two outputs one is q and q bar right so here q will have q is the uh, say for example yes if s value is zero and q value is zero it remembers that is the previous whatever is the previous data suppose you, uh, here q is having one and q this is having zero imagine here these two are complement you can see the uh, uh, representation q and q bar so when this is one this will be zero when this is zero this will be one so both cannot be at a time one, zero or both cannot be at a time one that state is forbidden okay so uh, let us imagine it has the value one q is having value one and q bar is having zero now suppose you give the value zero zero for both okay so when you give zero zero what happens this zero goes there and here also we have zero this zero goes here so what happens zero and zero uh, for nor gate it is uh, it will be uh, complemented so now you have one right now this one goes here and then here zero goes there so one and zero it is zero output will be sorry here one comes here and then we have zero so one into zero it is zero and when it comes here here it is one so what happened here one comes uh, here zero goes there and uh, one and previous uh, one and the zero here it is zero actually here 1 plus 0 it is 1 but when it comes out it is 0 isn't it or then because of this reverse it becomes 0 yes correct so now you have 0 so repeatedly what happens it remembers the previous state isn't it before giving 0 when the input is 1 and 0 Uh, it, it it is still staying there it will not change the output will not change which means it is remembering the uh, output and it is storing the data that is what the meaning of when both the inputs are zero zero okay now suppose we have i'll uh, we'll see the reverse suppose it is having zero okay and this is having one when both the inputs are zero now what happens here zero goes right here it is one this one goes to the stop uh, this uh, uh, gate and what happened zero into one, zero plus one it is one but the reverse is zero so here again zero comes this zero goes here zero zero it is zero but output will be one because of this complement so still it remembers the previous state so when both are zero it remembers the previous state that's what the meaning so when both are zero q n q n means the previous state here q n plus 1 actually what has been given here is the next state it will change to next state that is what is represented here but when you give 0 0 it will remember the previous state. that is why we have given here q1 and here q n uh, q bar n okay now let us imagine uh, let us consider the next state let us consider this next state 0 and 1 yes is 0 and this is 1 now what happens and imagine we have 
zero and one here right now one goes here and this zero goes here so when zero zero it is zero and the output will be one okay now this one goes here one into one it is one plus one one and the output it is zero so here uh reset reset is since we are given one and zero now what happens reset is one so the q bar is one see here q bar is one and this is zero suppose you may ask it is similar to the previous uh, zero zero no it is not that now we'll see imagine you have the output to be one here and zero the previous output is one and now zero. Now you are applying a one here. Now what happened? This zero, because this is a previous output. So now this goes as an input for this. So one plus zero, it is one. Now it becomes, because of this reverse, this becomes zero. Now the previous one comes here. Okay, by the time, when it goes here, the previous one, or, uh, okay. Now what happened? Uh, sorry, this zero, since it gets converted into zero. Now, this zero goes here. Okay, zero, zero. Now, here, zero. Now, this is changed to one. Okay, now this is changed to one. Sorry. Oh, yes. Uh, now, this is changed to one. Now, what happens when you are resetting the flip flop? Now, Q is zero. Okay, that's what uh, I'm saying. Here, when uh, let us check this. When your S is zero, when S is zero and reset is one, the flip-flop is set to res uh, reset. That means zero. The value stored is zero. This is what is stored. Now, imagine, now you are, as we have seen, now I am giving a zero here. Okay, now it has to remember the previous state, which is nothing but zero. Yes, now zero goes here. And for this one comes here, zero plus one, one, again, it is zero here, right? Now this zero goes here, zero plus zero, it is zero. When it comes one, complement one. So it is remembering the previous state, right? Now, imagine we have uh, the value stored here is zero and one. Now I am setting the flip-flop, I'm giving zero as input. Now what happened? Zero I'm giving, this one goes here. Okay, now this one goes here. Zero plus one, what happens? It is one and the output is zero, right? Now this zero comes here and one. What happened? Uh, zero plus one, so here is also, it is one and it becomes zero here. And then this zero goes there, zero plus zero, and zero, now it becomes one. Let me write it again. Yes, when this is S is one and this is zero, now this zero comes here, right? Zero plus one, it is one, and here it becomes zero. Now this zero goes there, zero plus zero, it is zero, and here it becomes one. Okay. See, when S is given one, the output is changed to one. So it has set. Now when both are one, what happens? It is not allowed. It is called forbidden state because we don't know, we cannot predict the output. So when both are one, what happens? Here one is there, this one comes here, and one, here it becomes zero. Now this zero goes there, zero plus one, it is one. Now this becomes zero. So both are zero. So if you see this, when both one given, here output will be zero. This is not allowed because Q, here it is Q and here it is Q bar. This is Q bar and this is Q. So Q, Q bar means itself says if it is one, it becomes zero. If it is zero, it becomes one. So this is not allowed. That is why we call it as a uh, forbidden state. We can't predict the output and it is forbidden. So giving both one is not allowed. 
Now we will see the circuit diagram. Now let me draw the circuit diagram of this using the logism. So we can take the NOR gate implementation. So here one NOR, another NOR. That is the output is given as an input. That is what we have seen in the uh, see this uh, this that is the output is given fed. This is a memory from so it is, as it is storing data we call it as memory and it is given as an input. That is why we are saying it as a here. Yeah, that's what we have we are seeing here. See in the circuit. The output of this is fed as an input. Now, yes. Now we're giving the inputs. This. Now we'll check that this is R and this is S. I'm giving for R. So when R is given, this is Q bar, right? This is Q1, this is Q bar. When reset, this is one. Let me show you the S truth table. When uh, R is one. Okay, and S is zero. R is one and S is zero. What is the output? Q is zero and Q one, Q bar is one. This is what. Now, when S is one and R is zero, Q is one and Q bar is zero. Okay, when both are zero, see there will be no change. When both are zero, it remembers. The same state is maintained, which means it remembers the state. That is, it, it will be able to, if we connect it to a charger unit, we can store this data. That is the meaning. So it stores a uh, information one. That is the meaning. Because this is Q and this is Q bar. So now the flip flop is set to store a value one. Okay. Now again, when I make one and zero. Now ag again, I'm making it as zero. Now you can see it is maintaining the value zero. This is what we have to see. Q is zero now. That is whatever value in Q, that is what said to be stored. So Q is now zero. So that is what it is storing. Now, when I'm giving both one, see both has become, since clock signal is not connected, it is going to both zero, but this is not a correct answer. So what we have to do is see when I give, uh, both are zero and then I am giving here reset one but what happened here see it becomes one q becomes one which is unpredictable it should not be that when I press this one here only it has to be on and uh, q should be equal to zero but see how it is behaving see when I give for s one s zero now it is changing here it is zero now again, again. So this is unpredictable. So this condition should not be there. That is what uh, is. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. So we see the truth table. As we have seen, one when s is one and r is zero, q is one. Okay. Uh, that is why it is called set state. When it is set, the flip flop is set to store one. So that can be reflected in Q, this output. Okay, Q bar, its complement is Q bar, that is zero. Then after S equal to one and R equal to zero, after this, when you make zero, zero, as I said, it still remains. 
no change in the output that means it is storing the value then now you are changing 0 and 1 s to be 0 and r to be 1 it is nothing but you are making the flip flop to be 0 so the output is this 0 but whereas q bar will be 1 which is its complement now again when you give 0 it remains because uh, you have given 0 so it is storing the previous value that is 0 is stored there then when you give 1 1 both will become 0 that is what now we have seen and this is forbidden because after this when you change the state it will not behave properly because when I give 1 for r uh, this should be 1 and this should be 0 but we have seen just now we have seen when you give 1 this is on that is q is on which is not correct which is not the expected answer.